Here is a glossary. A glossary is usually found in the end in a glossary is usually found at the end like before the index. It, ha it, ha it, it has a little heading of the glossary and it has these words that are that that are hard that people don't understand. It helps read the glossary helps read because um, it it helps them understand the words and it's usually bold and when it's a hard word and it's and when it's hard word it's usually bold so that also means that it's in the glossary. It says underneath the words. It says underneath the words. It what says, the um, there's some labels underneath the words. It, it says what the word means. Mm -hmm. It says what the word means. And it says, and the label says what it means. This is an index. It has page numbers and a topic before it. Perhaps if you want to read about Earth's, Earth's crust, it's on page 32. If you want to read about uses for minerals, it's page 6, 36, 36 to 38, 40 and to 42. It helps the reader because if uh, perhaps, example, I'm a reader and I want to learn about, let's say, mineral hardness. I go to page 18, 20 to 22. This is a table of contents. Inside, there are numbers of pages that you can find the heading that you want to find. Like, example, mummies and pyramids. Yes. My recent pyramids, example, it's on page four. So in the book, when I go to page four, there will be a heading called Mummies and Pyramids. People use table of contents to help to help them know which which heading or what page number is what they want to find. Almost like an index. This is a caption. A caption is like when you use a picture and you have like a small sentence about what the picture is. You mean like the meaning? This is used for understanding what the picture means. So perhaps it I'm looking at a sedimentary rock. So this tells you what a sedimentary rock is. This is a diagram. A diagram is almost like a caption, but it has more labels. It has labels on it. For example, a diagram is about um, like a picture and tells what parts and, and tells what parts it is. For example, if I want to know where the engine is, there's a little line where it says engine and then it shows you where. And if I wanted to search for poop pegs, I could just I I can just look at the picture and then see that little little thing over there, it's a foot peg. People use diagrams to help them understand more about the story and what it is about. This is a bold word. Bold words are something like a word, example memory and inventor, inventors. It's hard to understand that word. What happens if I don't know what memory means? And I don't know what 
inventors mean? I have to go all the way back there to the glossary and this word will be the bold words will be there. You can under it there's a meaning if I don't understand the word. Bold words can be anywhere in books, like in a scientific book. Um, there's hard words, like example, hardness. What happens if I don't know what this means? I go to the back of the book and it'll tell the meaning. So that's what a bold word is, and the, it's why people use it. This is a label. A label is usually in a diagram. For example, do you see that line? And see that word over there? That line shows you where that thing is. For example, if I want to know where a handlebar is, yeah, I just had to follow a line and it's over there. Labels help people because if you, it tells which part the diagram, the diagram means. For example, if I if I wanted to find where a hand breaks, I don't go down here. I follow where the line says. People use break, people use labels to help them understand the diagram more. This is maps. Maps is something like it shows you a map and perhaps if I'm reading a koala book, it shows you which part the koala is. So this is Australia. It shows you which part of Australia the koalas live. So people use maps for understanding instead of saying, they live in Australia. It tells you which part it lives. Like, does it live in the northern part or in the southern part? So this is a map. This is a heading. A heading is like, it's like a t We're on our ninth one. You're recording right now. So a heading is like a title, but it's like the main idea of what the the author wants to talk about. For example, the heading is called Life in Trees. So I'm going to know how koalas live in trees and what they do too. People use the headings for to find out the main idea of the paragraph. This is a timeline. A timeline shows like which time something changes, perhaps how a frog grows. It grows from a little egg to a typo and then bigger, bigger, and it, there's more changes. Until it's fully grown. Or it changes like about time, like Perhaps in the year 2007, there was a hurricane. And in the year 2009, everything was fully repaired. So, that's how a timeline goes. People use it to discover the past of something or, and the future of something, like a changes of animals or the past and the future of life.